Well, as I have told you, as the government is insisting on these eviction moratoriums, I consider it to be an absolute unconstitutional taking of private property of individuals. The landlords are not getting compensated. They still have to pay mortgages and rent and property taxes and all of that. And uh, all of that's with no recompense. Uh, One of those property owners, landlord Carl Hagland, he sent me quite a shocking video. Here's just a little bit of a clip of what he encountered in one of his units. Guys, Carl Hagland here for the Admiral Apartments. I wanted to show you this disgusting mess. This is a building where we worked very hard to provide good quality workforce housing for people to raise families in it. We have this mess. That's all dog everywhere. It is dog everywhere on the floor. So you have an apartment that is absolutely filled with dog feces. Carl Hagland joins us here on the Dory Monson Show. Carl, good to talk to you this afternoon. Uh, good morning, Dory. Hi. So we need to uh, paint a little more of a picture here. So uh, tell me exactly what you saw, smelled, encountered as you went into one of your units. Well, Dory, um, at this particular building we're replacing, it's a 23-unit apartment building south end of the Rainer Valley. And one of my carpenters was in the process of replacing every single one of the 50-year-old entrance doors to each apartment. And um, he went into one apartment, started replacing the door, and then he called me, told me I should see this. And uh, I went over there, and it's an apartment that's just full of dog crap. Yeah. I mean, just dog crap everywhere. And then on top of that, in the living room, he's he's a hoarder. I mean, he's got dozens and dozens and dozens of boxes of what had been tennis shoes. Okay. And uh, I immediately did a video. And the most bizarre part is most of the dog crap is in one of the bedrooms in the back. And then in the hallway, yeah. outside the hallway, he's feeding the dog with yuppie organic dog food. <laughs> but the so, most bizarre so, part is he has a small fan in the back bedroom and that's venting the smell. Uh, so, yeah. And he's living in one of the bedrooms, the other bedroom, which we didn't go into. And then his living room was full of, full of sports shoes. And this is a guy who hasn't paid rent for 17 months. He okay, owes, you know, over $25,000 in rent. He lets his dog crap in one of the back bedrooms. Let me share with my listeners. Here is one yes. other clip of your walkthrough from that apartment. The place smells like he's smoking meth. You see all these boxes here. The guy is really spending his money on rent. He's buying sports tennis shoes. No rent, 16 months. Dog everywhere. Spend his rent money on upscale yuppie dog food. Okay, so this guy cannot afford to pay rent, but he can afford the finest dog food available, huh? No, he can't afford to pay rent. He goes to work every day. Yeah. Oh, he can he, afford. He is seen by yeah. He is seen by the tenants going to work every day. Yeah, he has a job. He simply decided. What happened was before the before the pandemic started and this moratorium on collecting rent from tenants, he right. was behind on his rents. He was a difficult tenant. We worked out a repayment plan, and we actually had to file an eviction, but then we worked out a repayment plan, and we allowed him to continue on. And then the pandemic started, and he decided, well, I'm not going to pay rent anymore. So he's not paying rent. He's still going to work. He's got his dog crap in his apartment. He's, he's spending his rent on dog food. Dog food and expensive tennis shoes. He probably has probably a huge collection of wonderful tennis shoes. And we can't we can't evict him. Here's the most bizarre part about this is you got dog crap everywhere. And I've got very smart attorneys who work for me. And I say I, I have no problem stepping up and protecting the other tenants in the building from this kind of disruptive behavior. And I have no problem stepping up to protect to protect my building from sure. people who are destroying it. But my attorneys have gone over and said that we cannot evict this person. Under the moratorium right now, unless somebody is an imminent threat, meaning if somebody's got a knife and they want to stab me, or if, you know, somebody is like they've got a broken sewer line in their apartment and the sewage is flooding into apartments downstairs, aside from that, we can't, we can't evict him. And for this person, he's simply chosen to, you know, have his apartment filled up with dog crap. That's his deal. It looks like he's drying it out. I mean, who knows? You know, I mean, if I yeah. – the other part, too, is this bizarre – he is a hoarder, and that is a protected class in Seattle now. So he's you, he's a no, hoarder. Wait a second. He's a protected, you have yeah, to be yeah. kidding me. They've added no. hoarders to the list of protected classes? Hoarding is considered a mental illness by the city of Seattle. 
and as a result, they are a protected class. Yeah, yeah, that That's is unbelievable. So, so, so you've got you've got the you know the, the living room is where the hoarding is, and and you know in the kitchen he's got all kinds of empty pizza boxes, and and as I said, boxes in the living room and junk everywhere. That's he's a protected class, and then in terms of dog crap. It's not impacting any of the other tenants. It's not like dog crap is rolling into the apartment down below or or, um, well, or dog pee is seeping downstairs. He's keeping it fairly well contained, you know, in kind of like the back half of the apartment. He's got his little fan that kind of vents the smell. So it's not bad for him. And I, who knows, maybe if I asked him, I had a conversation with him, he'd probably say, well, I got a hobby. This is, I'm just composting, you know, no. valuable materials that could be used by organic gardeners in Seattle. Right. I mean, who knows how he's thinking. But sure. we cannot evict him. We cannot collect rent. There's nothing we can do in this crazy city of Seattle to change that situation currently. You have talked to him one-on-one? No, I haven't. My property manager has. Okay. And he's, you know, he's evasive. He does not want to have a conversation. I mean, he's just, like I say, he, he is who he is, and he's going to continue to do what he's doing. And that's, that's it. And then when we evict him, he's probably going to find a friend who, has good credit, probably lived with his friend for two or three years in the city of Seattle. We can't we can't ask him to leave because if we rent to one person, he can have any roommates in his apartment. Hmm. And then in three years or so after this eviction, because there will be an eviction, after this eviction, you know, he three years from now, a property owner will lease to him because generally it takes about three years to season an eviction and then the process starts over again. But here's the most bizarre part about the story is as if Ultimately, it can get city... more bizarre, but okay, try No, it. it gets even more bizarre. Here's the other odd part is there is currently an incentive for us to leave him in the apartment. That's the other part that is so odd. There is an incentive for us to leave him in the apartment because ultimately, ultimately, the government has no choice. They're going to pay almost 100% of all the back rent out there across the nation. There's about $52 billion in back rent that's owed. Currently, the federal government has funded $49 billion dollars to try to bring people current. Mm-hmm. And and this guy owes so much money that all we have to do is wait and then we'll be contacted by a nonprofit who's distributing the funds and they'll say, well, how much does he owe? We'll send you a full check and then we'll pay for so many months going forward. Well, what does this guy do for a living? You said he works every day. Uh, he's, um, I, I noticed there's like a pay stub or whatever in the kitchen that I was looking at. And it looks like he's a security guard. And then I noticed there was... Uh, <laughs> a holster and a pair of handcuffs i noticed so it looks okay. like he's you know he's he's got a job where he's going out and providing security someplace as you sit there pay whatever bills you have on this apartment every month i mean you have to be seething at the situation you're in zero zero i'm used to it i mean here's here's the sad part about it dory is i i started off again you know i was like you know my parents were you know, typical middle class. I grew up in working class Everett where nobody really had any money. You know, mom yeah. stayed at home. There were lots of big families. And a big weekend for us with the family was dad would bring home a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. And then periodically he changes oil and change brakes on his car. And that's yeah. what everybody did in my neighborhood. Okay. But so I'm used to a hard life. I'm used to working really hard. You know, I'm used to enduring crappy jobs and things not going my way and eventually things work out. That's how it is with my business. And also because I didn't have a lot of money and I was ambitious with real estate, the only place I could buy buildings, larger properties, and this was beginning in the very, right. very early nineties, late eighties was the Rainier Valley. So I, I was used to hardship. I was used to crime. I was used to challenging tenants, but I endured in that challenge knowing things would work out. So this is just simply another chapter. Okay. We'll endure this. Things will work out. We'll do well. There'll be property owners, housing. I like to call them housing providers, not landlords. Okay, this is in feudal times. That's but what's fine. going to happen is those those people who who find this uncomfortable will leave the industry, and then myself and other people like me who are comfortable with this, who are committed to a cause, who who you know see this as the noble cause to stick up for a neighborhood and provide good quality workforce housing for working people for a safe right. place for them to, to live. We will prevail because those property owners will sell. We'll buy more real estate. We'll get through this, and we'll still do well. How many dogs does this guy have? He's got one dog. That's a lot of material from one dog because, I mean, it looked like almost every square foot of the floor was covered. It, it was, but you have to remember, I mean, a dog craps two or three times a day, and it's probably gone on for, you know, a year and a half. 
Yeah. You know, probably what happened. Probably what happened was as soon as the eviction moratorium started again, these people are smart. The people that that intentionally, you know, stiff housing providers, they're very they're very smart people. And I, um, I and tell you, probably very early on thought I'm not going to pay my rent. By the way, I'm going to do this passive aggressive mean thing to the property owner and. I'm going to chuckle every time I see the dog crap. So that's you're looking at a year and a half, year and a half of dog crap, if not before that. Well, here's the here's the story that I just learned. I just googled it as we're speaking. Hoarding is considered a disability, and so people with a hoarding disorder are a protected class under the Fair Housing Act. Property owners cannot evict a tenant based on hoarding activity. It is a mental disability, they say. I mean, that's I, – I had no idea this conversation was going to go in that direction, Carl. That's unbelievable. Well, but, Dory, here's why. Because you don't have housing providers on your show that actually provide, you know, good quality workforce housing for working people, men and women, and families yes. in the city of Seattle. I mean, you may have had a housing provider in the past, but they're developing Class A apartment buildings. I mean, I'm – I say my, my company is specialized in being in the trench, trenches. And yeah. my companies, we have we have been true community activists where we're out there fighting in the streets to protect our tenants and create an oasis for these families. So, yeah, it's news. Yeah. And it gives you an idea of just how dysfunctional these laws are in the city of Seattle for housing providers and working families and how 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 adversarial it is. I mean, could you imagine that this guy's a hoarder and the oh, Department yeah. of Housing, the city attorney would sue us if we tried to boot him out because his apartment is a filthy mess. Could yeah, you imagine that? that? I, I can I can understand I can kind of start to wrap my brain around somebody being a hoarder and they collect old magazines. Uh, a hoarder of dog poop. That's a new one to me, Carl. Yeah, That's... well, you got the dog poop and then you got the empty boxes of sports shoes and all the pizza boxes in the kitchen. Right. So, yeah, again, it's it's all new. It's all new for you, but it's old hat for me. And it's old yeah. hat for for my for my team and my maintenance team. Yeah, it is. And I have to say, Dory, this is just one chap of, chapter of some of the most bizarre and odd yeah. things. Again, when I tell my story about what my company's had to endure and what I've had to endure personally to provide safe you. housing in a neighborhood where nobody cared, you'll be shocked by many of the stories. And you'll be yeah. shocked by how abusive the Department of Housing is, the city attorney is, and the Department of Housing. Well, yeah, no, I'm used to hearing those stories. Well, Carl, let's stay in touch. <laughs> I want to I want to find out how this all comes out in the end. <laughs> you get it? Okay. Huh? Yeah, yeah, no Dory, Dory. It's all, all going right. to work out. Hey, okay. you know it's all going to work out. You'll like the ending. Okay. Dory, it's been a pleasure and thank you so much for having me on your show. Good talk with you, Carl. All right. Uh, Carl Hagland joining us, a victim of a, not only a deadbeat renter, but uh, uh, hoarding deadbeat renter if you want to find out more look at carl hagland foundation.com and you can see the video up there and i'll pop it up on uh, my site too carl hagland foundation.com uh, it's a mess all right i'd love to know what you think about all this you can text me at 989073 that's 989073 lots more to come here on the dory monson show